any object. Why you find that object so pretty? Because asking yourself this will only lead you to find that you cannot understand why you think this object is so pretty. This just means that your choices, they were arbitrary, they were random. And just like that, you all have been a stellar example of the nihility of free will. Hi, I'm Samara Tibrawal, and today I'm here to challenge your thinking, to make you question everything you ever thought you knew about free will. How many of you in this room believe in free will? Raise your hands. For those of you who don't know, free will is defined as the ability to act without the constraint of fate, the ability to make your own choices and act at your own discretion. Raise your hands if you believe in free will. OK, great. You, you all are the libertarians. And those of you who don't, OK, you are the determinists. The great debate between the libertarians and the determinists has spanned centuries, and today I would like to discuss it. Now, free will libertarianism exists mainly from a philosophical point of view, emphasizing the belief in individual autonomy. It states that individuals have the ability to make choices and decisions that are not based off their genetics, the environment, or divine will, and it encompasses many theories that argue for the existence of free will. Libertarians more often not choose to believe in agent causation, which states that individuals have the ability to initiate actions or decisions that independently of prior causes. Now, another reason why so many believe in free will is a strong sensation that convinces you that you can indeed make your own decisions. For instance, if I were to present you with an apple and an orange and ask you to pick one, you firmly believe that you have the ability to pick either the apple or the orange. And is this very feeling rooted in the strong belief that convinces you that you have the freedom to make your own choices is what leads many to believe in free will. Now, on the other extreme, and the more widely supported by physics, we have hard determinism. It is rooted in the principle of causal determin determinism, which states that every event has a cause, and these causes unfold in a deterministic manner. If you look at these dominoes, for example, this domino fell because it hit by this one, and this because of the previous. Each domino fell because it was hit by the previous, mimicking the larger workings of this universe. Every event has a cause, linking all the way back to the beginning of time. This means that the entire story of the universe was already determined at the Big Bang, and we are just simply watching it play out. This just then leaves simply no room for free will in a purely deterministic universe. Consequently, this theory suggests that if you were able to know all of the factors influencing a particular event, maybe the physical, the psychological, the physiological, for example, you could predict its outcome with certainty. However, the laws of physics make it impossible to know every single factor influencing a particular particle. This inherent uncertainty implies that there will always be some level of uncontrollable randomness in this universe. Thus, no one can accurately predict the future precisely. Predictions will be based on probabilities. In quantum physics, Random fluctuations persist and contribute to the unpredictability of outcomes in this universe, where every result will be governed by probability rather than uncertainty. However, individual particles do adhere to specific laws that render their behavior to a certain degree predictable. And it is this very predictability that increases as their numbers increase. For instance, if I were to flip 10 coins, it may not always result in a five heads and five tails even split. There could be variations like six heads and four tails. However, with more flips, there could be 52 heads out of 100 or 499 heads out of 1,000. The outcome tends to approach closer to an even split. Similarly, in quantum mechanics, while the behavior of individual particles may be unpredictable, their predictability increases as their numbers increase. And given the vast number of particles in our human body and thus the universe, our overall behavior does align with the predictability described by the laws of large numbers. Now, some determinists like to argue 
that free will is just simply an illusion. They go so far as to say our sense of making choices and, act and decisions is simply a product of deterministic processes occurring in our brains, heavily influenced by our upbringing, our genetics, our environment, and other uncontrollable factors. This debate piqued the interest of multiple neuroscientists, one of whom was John Dylan Haynes, who explored the role of free will in making simple decisions. In his experiment, participants were shown letters of the alphabet, changing every half second on a screen, and had buttons to press on each index finger. They were then asked to press these buttons and remember the letter on their screen as they made the decision to do so. They were also connected to an fMRI machine monitoring their brain activity. Researchers then used their brain activity to predict their choices up to six full seconds before participants were even aware of them. This means that our brains, it subconsciously makes decisions before we even realize them, challenging the notion of free will. However, a few outliers in this experiment prove that once again, probability simply does not equate to certainty. This stance of determinism does provide a conundrum, because I would like to ask you, without free will, would you really be able to hold individuals accountable for their actions? For instance, in a completely hypothetical situation, of course, I love my brother very much. But after his years of nagging me, if one day I wake up and decide to, I don't know, push him into a pool, would I really be held accountable? Or can one argue that that was simply an inevitable outcome and my action was simply predetermined? Because when our actions become influenced by factors beyond our control, it becomes difficult to hold individuals accountable for them. However, determinism stance in accountability presents a dual perspective. One that argues about this set conundrum, and the other, the more intriguing aspect and often overlooked, is that without determinism, accountability in fact becomes impossible. Let me elaborate. Now, determinism poses that all our actions are based off predetermined factors, such as our preferences and personality traits, which define our character. In other words, our character forms the basis of our actions. Without determinism, our actions would simply rely on randomness, undermining the link between character and responsibility. Thus, determinism underscores the uniqueness of each individual and, and reinforces the idea that accountability stems from the consistent expression of one's character through predetermined actions. Another perspective often highlighted in the discussion about accountability is the degree to which individuals can be held accountable for their actions. The prefrontal cortex, which is more advanced in humans compared to other species, plays a crucial role in controlling alien impulses. Research indicates that the prefrontal cortex continues to develop until age 25, or may even always remain underdeveloped in individuals with certain conditions, such as developmental disorders. Now, this raises questions of whether these individuals, juvenile criminals or criminals with such disorders, should be incarcerated, given the fact that they may have limited control over their actions. Sad sadly, despite these challenges, these individuals are still often imprisoned to safeguard society from their predispositions and potentially offer opportunities for rehabilitation. Understanding this perspective can encourage us to cultivate empathy for those who struggle to fit in societal norms. Recognizing that under a similar plight, our own behavior might not differ. Now, why can't we never definitely conclude whether free will exists or not? Because even if we assume that determinism holds true at a physical level, it may not fully capture the complexity of the human consciousness and the decision-making process. And this is exactly where compatibilism enters. Now, compatibilism contends that free will can coexist with determinism. However, it faces critique. Critics like to argue that compatibilists often redefine free will in a way that may align with determinism but may not match our common or intuitive understandings of free will. Com for instance, compatibilists redefine free will as the ability to act within one's own desires and reasons, even if those desires and reasons are causally determined by prior events. In essence, 
Our actions are considered free when they originate from internal thought and emotion rather than external constraint. However, consider this. Even when you make your choices independently, these choices are driven by your desires. And if your desires dictate your choices, can they truly be considered free? After all, you did not choose your desires in the first place. This relates back to you choosing the prettiest object in this room. Could you explain your tastes and your preferences, leading you to believe that that was indeed the prettiest object in the room? No. Therefore, in a sense, not even that decision was a truly free decision. Why do humans continue to believe in free will despite all of this evidence? Firstly, it grants individuals independence. And this belief is crucial in moral, legal, and social contexts, such as the justice system, where responsibility hinges on choices being freely made. Furthermore, it promotes a sense of empowerment, optimism, and self-improvement amongst individuals by fostering the belief that our actions can impact our outcomes and that people can control their fate. As our comprehension of physics, the universe, and even the workings of our own mind progresses, so does our understanding of free will. Millennia ago, there may have been no evidence contradicting the existence. Um, however, today, abundant sources such as books, reports, and videos all provide new insights in the subject. Humans are a species in constant development and evolution. What we consider true today might be disapproven tomorrow, and it is possible that in the distant future, our understanding could radically shift once more. Therefore, asserting definitely whether free will exists or not remains elusive, and that is exactly why a compromise between these two extremes, libertarianism and determinism, is essential. Now, regardless of whether you believe in fate or choice in this free will conundrum, what this discussion highlights is an important realization in our daily lives. It suggests that individuals may not have full control over their actions. And this level of control may vary greatly from individual to individual and situation to situation. And understanding this complexity is exactly what encourages us to approach others with empathy, support, and understanding, acknowledging the nuance factors influencing human behavior. Thank you.